cab. Uh, this is the second taxi game that I've played tonight. I just finished playing some Night Call, uh, so now we're going to check out the other taxi game that came out. Like I said with Night Call, it's like Deep Impact and Armageddon coming out the same year. Uh, you know, Neo Cab and Night Call are both games about cabbies learning stories about their passengers, uh, but I think they go in pretty different directions. So let's see what's special about this one. Uh, I think I started a new game back when I first got it, and I've completely forgotten everything that happened, so uh, I'm basically hitting this fresh. Night One, the desert outskirts, Los Ojos, California. The Eyes, California. So, okay, so this one's, this one's in the United States. The last one was in France, uh, and uh, I kept being tempted to try accents. Uh, hopefully this one won't. So it's like flashing lines on the highway hypnotize you in some weird way. Like it's normal to talk to the clouds. Or come up with a name for the hundredth Joshua tree you pass in this endless desert. I was officially at that point. So, uh, I didn't under, I didn't parse that sentence right, sorry, I'm getting tired. <laughs> to Los Ojos, to my new life, to my oldest friend. Hopefully I can still read, it's late enough at night. It was like a gift when Savvy called me last week. My life was going nowhere fast and she knew it. Used to be her life, too. Losing jobs to Capra's AI. Uh, juggling a dozen gigs and still coming up short. Getting way too comfortable just being sad. So when she offered me to be roomies again, uh, this time at her place in the big city? Didn't matter anymore what had come between us. Or what we'd said when we were angry. All that mattered was the road ahead. That and the battery charges that had set me back 30 coin. Nothing like rolling into your new life completely broke. No problem, this is cool, cool, cool. You're a driver, just drive. If I could pick up even one ride out here, I'd be in a better place. Maybe even get a fancy here's to us cocktail with Savvy like the old times. I started up Neocab. Okay, so night call had me push a button to clear each line of text this time i have to really stand like you see me i've missed a couple of lines like i would get distracted or i would read too slow or i would think of something else and i would totally stumble a line and that's it the line goes away uh, i don't know if the whole game's gonna be like this but it's gonna be a challenge to keep keep up with it if it is all right so that's a pretty similar sort of problem you know you've got a character who's down on the luck, out of money, uh, you know, bleeding cash, and so you've got to take rides to keep going while also telling a story. All right, so this is more, so this is like futuristic. It sounds like 30 coin is some futuristic currency. Uh, looks like we've got a holographic display here, so, uh, and obviously a very sci fi haircut. So, what am I talking about? I've practically got that haircut. Um, so, pick up request. Okay, so it looks like there's. The Combine? Wait, is this Half-Life 2? Um, okay, so here's somebody. And they want to go there? To the Outer Lands? Sure, okay. For a second I thought maybe Liam had put a pin in the wrong place. This didn't feel like a convenient pickup spot for anyone. I could barely make him out at first. All I saw was desert and dusk. Then I spotted him, a lone figure dragging what looked like a huge luggage or a small elephant. Uh, he got into the car bags first and squeezed in like he was their sidekick. Hi, uh, pick up for Liam? You are Liam, right? Yeah, sure. Um, I feel this anxiety creeping up from the back seat. I can't help it. I absorb that stuff like a sponge. Yes, uh, thank God, yes, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, man. Uh, what's up? I thought, uh, I spend all day out there in the desert taking photos of the stars and uh, the L.O. skyline. There is no good place to put my face. Uh, I thought I'd lost my memory card. Bastard smaller than a grain of rice. Why do they keep making them smaller? My heart's bloody racing. His accent was smooth and musical. I couldn't quite place it. Definitely not Southern California. I'm not going to try an accent until I know where he's from. Yep, that's me. Oh, I missed what he said. Dang it, this moves fast. Awesome, thanks for picking me up all the way out here in Nowheresville. 
it's my job. Neocab goes where Capra fears to tread. Not to mention it was on my way. Where are you coming from? Cactus Flats. Don't know that one. Going to the big city on holiday? Okay, if you seen holiday, it must be European. More like a permanent vacation. The car's carrying my whole life right now. I'm moving. Moving? Oh, that's huge. How are you feeling? I don't know. I think I'm... Excited? Never been to Los Ojos before. Stop it. That's your first time in Automation City? Is that crazy? No, uh, I mean, yes. Moving somewhere you never even visited? Oh, but it's bloody cool. Don't sweat it. It's mine, too. Just, uh, though I'm just visiting. For work? Sort of. I I'm a photographer. Or trying to be. I'm taking a year off from my real job to see what I can make happen. And yes, I acknowledge this accent is also bad, like the one I used in Night Call. A year to travel the world and take pictures. The dream. Hey, don't close your eyes while you're driving. Savvy and I had talked about doing something like that after college, until I couldn't go. Instead, she met a guy, a sculptor, and lived that dream with him. They broke up after a screaming fight in Milan. She came home with a half-finished clay figure of herself. She always loved playing the muse. So, what about you? Why hello? Moving in with my best friend. I actually haven't seen her in ages. We used to be super close, and then we kind of weren't. Why did that just slip out? I always forget how easy it is to spill your secrets when you're only making eye contact with the road in front of you. For sure. I moved <laughs> I've moved a lot. UK, France, Canada. Sort of fading in and out of different friend groups. Maintaining most of my relationships online. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, why now? What made you make the leap? She asked. All she ever had to do was ask. I just realized my life isn't as good without her in it. I love that. Sometimes it's just the only thing that makes sense, right? Exactly. It'll be a fresh start for us. I hope. I guess this photography thing's my so uh, sort of my fresh start. So why are you getting the keys to the new place tonight? I'll probably be out snapping pictures of Capra Tower. Capra Tower? Gross. Okay, I'm going to take a break real quick, since it's paused, and read some of the chat. <laughs> um, oh, let's see here. Okay, nothing much. We just got uh, Super Shambam41 joining us on YouTube, so... Hi, Shambam. And, uh, yeah, Wearing Orb, I will, uh, you know, I will gladly listen to any recommendations that you have for other games to play. Just because I won't promise, you know, yeah, I won't promise to, that I'll play them. Partly it's just because a lot of the times I have to be very careful about the games that I choose because sometimes, you know, if if I get bored, um, then I get worse and worse and worse at trying to be entertaining on the stream. So you'll see me start to do things like um, read a character in a robot voice like I did in Night Call, uh, just to sort of keep things going for myself. Um, so, so yeah, I try to grab games that I'm really interested in so that I can actually be interesting on the stream. Uh, anyway, I mean, I hope you get some good shots. Your emotional state affects which options you can choose. Interesting. So, so I can't say that because of my emotional state. I'm just like mad at Capra Tower. So I have to like I have to say this. <laughs> Doing a cover shoot for Multinational Monster Magazine. Hey, whoa! It's just a beautiful building. Yeah, you can afford beautiful buildings when you have a monopoly <laughs> over the entire tech sector. So we're learning a little bit about the background of this place. The spoil of selling out human dignity, right? He shifted in his seat and tried to smile, but it was tight, uncomfortable. Capra. The name carried so much baggage for me. My first driving gig, my only income stream. Before they replaced me and every other driver with auto cars, soulless capsules of glass and plastic. But hey, those things don't need health insurance. I tensed up to seeing their logo, which was all over the place. Nearly every passing car was one of theirs. Crawling our streets, covered in sensors, collecting data on everything and everyone. Just hearing Liam say the name had my heart pounding in my ears. Right, you're not a fan. We don't need to get into it. It 
felt all like all the energy in the car had flipped. It was closed off suddenly. Cold. This is exactly why everyone says that talking politics with a PAX is the quickest way to tank your star rating. PAX must be passenger? My 4.9 driver rating definitely didn't want me to push him. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Do I want to get into it? Maybe I want to get into it. Actually, I want to get into it. Hmm. <laughs> Pure evil. You don't care that they've gutted the job market? Looking at her tense like that is interesting. What I think is that I'm here to take pictures. I'm going to LO for the aesthetic. I really don't want to talk politics. But that's so... What? I felt the tension in my arms, the tingles at the back of my neck, the anxious twist in my gut. Both of these games have been pretty good at describing what's going on in your body. What was I doing? Was my grudge against Capra worth losing stars? It was exactly what had happened with me and Savvy. I got all emotional in something that really wasn't a big deal and pushed her away. You're so volatile, Lena. Like I'm looking for reasons to be sad or worried. Like all my bad feelings just leap out of me and poison my life, when actually everything was just fine. I couldn't let that happen again with us. Ugh, I'm sorry. I think I'm just stressed. I'm saying that because that's what I say usually when I've said something stupid. Moving is weird. It's all good. I just don't want to talk about it. I get there's a lot of baggage attached to LO. Trust me, I really do. But I'm not here to pick it up. This week, for once, I'm just a tourist. Well, sorry again anyway. I'm sorry, cop! Don't worry about it, seriously. Look, if I wanted a silent ride with a brainless driver, I'd have called Capra. You're, more, <laughs> you're much more fun. As the sun went down, I could just make up the first lights of L.O. appearing over the desert. Suddenly, like a mirage. We were almost there. The city lights spilled across my windshield as we crossed the Los Ojos city limits. He pulled out his camera and I heard the shutter clicking away behind me. So Randall Court showed up and said, if I keep mentioning the Hex, will you keep playing it? Oh, man, it's been so long since that one session I did of the Hex. I don't even remember what was going on in that game. I'd have to watch the video again. <laughs> Sorry, Randall Court. Um, okay, anyway. I thought about Savvy. No more nights alone. No more longing for change. I was making the change, and I was ready. By the way, they put a lot into the background of this. Anyway, here I am, Savvy. It's real. I did it. I pulled up to Leon's destination. A modest hotel. Nice, but had an art to it. Made sense. You know this is going to be great, right? If you're doing something really big, it's going to pay off. So, yeah, so it's really worth noticing, like, all of the little touches they put in to make the characters seem alive. Like, you've got not just sort of the, the moving the moving parallax in the background, you know, the, the, the fact that they actually really are driving you. It looks like they're driving you through a 3D city. Like, they actually built this place so that you could get the background going. It's not just sort of subtly depicted with hand-wavy stuff. Like, it, I mean, they probably, I'm assuming that because you, they do have these moments where it's paused and you can make a decision... I'm assuming they must have, like, you know, the ability to sort of go over the same terrain again and again to sort of keep the, you know, keep the car moving while y you sort of play for an indefinite amount of time. Um, but also knows just all the little subtle things going on in the animations. The way she keeps sort of moving her fingers, adjusting her grip on the steering wheel. There's like a sort of rise and fall of her chest when she breathes. Her eyes are constantly sort of darting around a little bit looking at different things and you actually knowing the inside of a car you know what she's looking at a rear view mirror dashboard you know and then you know <laughs> off to the side and and then you know she'll occasionally like have these little tiny micro expressions on her face um he'll do the same thing it's i feel like there's 
there's more that's going into these visuals than went into it went into it in uh, in Nightcall. But I mean, this was a lot of time that somebody spent to make these characters feel alive and give them uh, a nice library of expressions and things like that that they could use in these conversations. So I'm pretty impressed by this stuff. We'll see, I guess. And sorry again for being so pushy back there. I, I didn't mean to. Hey, we're cool. I got into my share of arguments with cab drivers before. You have? Yeah, with much worse opinions. That's a relief. Believe it or not, people have tanked my star rating for less. I believe it. And listen, I know you've already got a friend in town, but I'll be crisscrossing town in neocabs all week. Maybe we'll get paired up again. I'd like that. He shouldered his luggage and headed back to his hotel, waving at me as he disappeared through the doors. I waved back. I'm glad that that could go well, even though I started out as a little bit of a butt. <laughs> I guess I'd made it. And now, it's time to find another customer. So, oh, perfect rating. Nice. Thanks, Liam. Great driver. If a little pushy when it comes to the competition. Moving can be stressful. Welcome to Hello. Well, that is nice. That actually kind of warmed my heart having that interaction with somebody. That's kind of cool. So, um, okay, so, so far, Nightcall and Neocab do have a lot in common because we've got, because Neocab here is, you know, it, it does seem like it's about picking up these, these, uh, these fares, getting a little vignette story about, about who this person is, but there's also this broader story, but instead of it being a murder mystery, um, it's it's a story about my life and my emotions and you know my friendships and things like that and I'm sort of using these uh, these conversations with fairs to sort of tri triangulate on what's going on in my life so it's a very different kind of story at least so far uh, I mean I don't know maybe there's a murder at some point I've, I've only gotten a little ways into it but it's interesting how the same structure is being used to tell such different kinds of stories but but it's still kind of telling them in a similar way so far, I don't have a conspiracy tack board yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I also don't know how much choice I have in which fares I take in what order, because uh, I had a lot of, uh, of that kind of choice in night call. Okay, so my battery's down. Oh, a message from Savvy. Why, it's good, Lena. What's? <laughs> nice. That feels very much like texting with my kids. Um, bad news, we're back to Cactus Flats. <laughs> OMG, no. What happened? <laughs> what? I'm assuming I'm joking. I chickened out. What? kidding jk lol you're the worst <laughs> i barely brought anything moving's gonna take two seconds i cleaned up a bit <laughs> yep wait actually come pick me up Sending you a pin. Everything okay? Yeah, I just got caught in a work thing. Uh, no problem. I got gotcha. you. Yes. Can't believe I get to see you so soon. My rave fave, my literal favorite human. Oh my god. Can't wait, savviest. If it moves, it's Capra. How long did it been since I'd seen Savvy? Six months? No, a year? It didn't seem possible. Some days it was easy to feel like she was still around, because everywhere I went in Cactus Flats was soaked through with memories. Most days that just made me miss her more. Nobody gets me like she does. Like, really gets me. Being around her makes me feel more like myself. Or maybe just made me like it more. I saw her up ahead and my stomach flipped. Savvy! L Bunny! I guess that's me, I'm, I'm L Bunny. 
We're savvy and L bunny and we like the boom. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, so um, Wolfo78 says, this feels like a telltale game where two complete strangers' fates are now intertwined. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like, you know, I think the beginning of The Walking Dead wasn't too different from, uh, from this stuff. Uh, okay, so you want to sit way back there? Or you look amazing. Um, yeah, you sure want to sit way back there? Yep, I'm trying to get that authentic private driver experience, you know? Honestly, I just feel safer back here. You're the only reason I would get into one of these things. Oh my god, did you actually get prettier somehow? Looking good, girl. Oh, come on. Whatever you've been up to is working. God, seeing you again is like... It's like home, you know? Me too. Sorry, could we less talk, more vroom? Being this close to Capra HQ creeps me out. Yeah, I thought it was weird you wanted to meet here. Oh, I was downtown and it's a giant eyesore, you know? Seemed easy for you to find. Well, now I know where to avoid. People are so bitter about this company. <laughs> so... Don't have lights like this back in the flats, right? The way we left things echoed in my head. Heat rushed into my cheeks. Was I turning red? My chest tightened and fluttered like I couldn't get enough air. I'd called her selfish and cried until I couldn't breathe. Right before I begged her not to leave. Was that what she was thinking about too? I'm sorry about how we left things. I just wanted to say... Ancient history, whatever. I'm totally over it. Whoa, what have you been up to? Tell me everything. Well, I kind of bounced around for a while. Remember that guy who said he could crash, I could crash with him and his roommates? Definitely remember how he always called me Lisa. Turned out his roommates were more like his parents? They were super sweet and their place was nice AF. Oh my god, so clean. And then his mom gave us matching sweaters for Christmas? I swear I felt myself shrivel into a little ghost right then and there over the eggnog. Yikes. Very. Compared to perfect family times, social activism is way more chill. Just some fogies too afraid of their own shadows to really affect change, but I can work with that. It's effect change. Speaking of, I can't believe we're back in your old steery. This thing knows all my secrets. And you know I love retro as much as the next girl, but steery, by the way, is a name for a... Uh, would you mind parking it a little down the street from my place? People would get really weird if they thought I was pro-car. It's just a big issue in my work right now, you know? <laughs> so in a world full of automated vehicles, they call this kind of car a steery. That's great. That works for me. Wait, are you anti-car? I mean, kinda. Nothing personal, but that's like shop talk for me. We don't have to get into it, right? Not get into a fight right away. Sounded good to me. Sure. But wait. Where are we going? What, what's your address? Oh, yeah, pull over. What, you live here? No, I, I just remembered. I, I got you a present. Oh, no, I didn't get you anything. You're here, like, for good. That's enough for me, L Bunny. Okay, I'll pull over. And then, I guess we gotta wait till she actually pulls over. <laughs> All right, find, find, find a spot. There we go. Close your eyes and hold out your right hand. Um, are you gonna? No, unlike you, psychopath, I will not put a bug in it. It wasn't a bug. It was a caterpillar. And it was fuzzy. Oh, I remember. Come on, give me your hand. You forgot, uh, I forgot how tiny your hands were and how they were always so cold. 
I should have brought. <laughs> I should have brought you some gloves. Size extra, extra small. Yeah, yeah. Jace is always whining about my icicle hands. Who's Jace? She slipped something metallic onto my arm. If you're not going to shut your eyes, then at least stop fidgeting. It tightened to a snug fitter on my wrist. Oh. Bloink. What's up with that? Is that my health bar? Oh wait, is this a mood bracelet? This is a mood bracelet. What is it? It's a feel grid. It's a sixth gen biofeedback device. The color and intensity shows your mood, basically the way you feel in your body at that exact moment. You're yellow, which means you're feeling positive. Probably because of my awesome gift. I've got the necklace edition, so feel good green. Now we can both have like total awareness of our emotional well-being. You know, to take care of each other and all that junk. Aw, Saviest, it's like the best friendship bracelet necklace ever. <laughs> exactly. So it's reading my brain waves? Nah, it reads your blood. T uh That is dope. Science AF, right? Literally everything we feel is because our brain triggered some chemical to flood our system, right? So this has a little sensor that reads all the molecules as they go surfing through your tubes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> so cool. See, it just moved toward green, which means you got a little chilled out. There are four basic colors. Yellow is like feel-good green, but higher intensity. Happy, sunny, excited. Red is angry, anxious, and agitated. Blue is blue. I don't know. Thought it'd be really cool for you to see your colors. People can people be so fake, you know? But everyone I know with a field grid, it's like an emotional superpower. Keeping it real is like second nature now. Even without talking for months, she still knew me so well. She didn't even see how I'd gone off on Liam just now. I've been a little all over the place, honestly. I get it. This just lets you know what you're feeling is real, but it, that it's temporary. Plus, now you'll know when your packs are getting to you. Too blue, you'll probably need to take a break. Too red, then you gotta stand up for yourself, okay? Too blue, you take a break. Too red, you stand up for yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll explode. No, but you might. <laughs> uh, I've seen what that looks like. This thing tells people they're crossing the line, so you don't have to. I know confrontation is more my thing. But as you can see, I'm surfing a chill green wave at the moment. <laughs> surfing a chill green wave. Chill as a cucumber. Lena, you're still saying it wrong? What, what? What's it supposed to be? Cool. Cool as a cucumber. Oh my god, I missed you. Come on. Even, I even tried to remember it like cucumbers are served chilled. Well, I missed you too, lady. See, now I know that made you happy and not like mad at me. <laughs> it's broken. I'm totally mad. <laughs> okay, but I'm being serious. It's not a big deal, but the way we fought when I left. Yes? I wasn't trying to hurt you. Was it just waiting for a spot in the animation where it could change her mood? To figure out why it delayed that particular time. I really don't want my feelings to upset anyone. But you do feel things a lot, actually. Which is something I really love about you. Your heart is so amazing in the way you feel things getting mad it's kind of beautiful but bottling all that up doesn't make it go away when it all comes out it's kind of intense like that night you're right oh look I've got it wait you can't see it I gotta go top left here oh it went away 
that I'm here and you're here, we're starting over. There was some kind of little mood matrix down in the bottom left corner of the screen and I, I, I didn't get out of the way fast enough for you to see it. And we're good, right? I, I don't usually uh, go for li lines where I start criticizing what somebody else is saying. I felt a weight lift off my rib cage. Uh, we're in sync again. We could always talk about serious stuff later. Savvy and I had all the time in the world now. So, how'd we get to your place? My pajamas are calling my name. She's got high tech pajamas that call her name. Oh, snap. I'm really sorry, but can you take me somewhere else real quick first? Sure. Where are we going? Well, I need you to drop me off, actually. It's this guy, and trust me, kind of a huge mess. You don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> I came all this way to see you, and you want me to give you a ride? I know, I'm really sorry. I kind of stepped in it at work, and I just got to go fix it before everything comes down on my head. I wish we could just go straight to this awesome ramen shop you're going to love instead of helping my dumbass. It's a little embarrassing. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's all going to be fine. I just got to do this one little thing before it blows up and then I get to keep my job, thank the gods. And we don't have to start looking for a cheaper place. Kidding. Didn't really sound like she was kidding. I never heard her take any jobs so seriously before, or even hint at money problems. Maybe we'd have more in common this time around, too. No worries, I gotcha. You're the best. I mean it. Well... Right back at you. He lives in this totally weird rich person dorm called Kinfolk. The place is crawling with techie scum. He sounds great. See, you aren't missing anything, trust me. He's been dying to get into this club, and tonight I can actually make it happen. But you should totally come meet up with me and Jace later. You could just pick up another ride, right? Who knows, maybe it'll be some cutie who wants to show you around L.O. Hang on. You're going to a club right now? Yeah, it's this incredible DJ who only plays secret shows. I bet you'll really like him. I can try to get you on the list? Let me just text Jace. Hmm. Okay, so... Okay. So let's go back to the top left here. Oh, it went away! Oh! Some kind of weird mood matrix over there that just appears... I don't want to be on the top of the screen because I keep interfering with subtitles, but I want you to see this thing that keeps appearing in the lower left. Maybe maybe I need to be in the bottom right? I don't know. I keep bouncing around this screen. So, okay, so I've got a little emotional tint on this line. So I'm going to try to save this line and see what it does. I kind of just want to hang out with you. You will, soon. So how long have you been with him? Yes, cool. Okay, he says he'll text you all the deets soon. Great, I'll just I'll just wait wait for the deets. I just got to do this thing, and then you should head over. So when? Oh, this is it, kinfolk. I'll text you in like an hour tops. Okay, then come meet us. Sounds good. See you soon, Rumi. Welcome to LO, and remember. Pick up a cute Pax next. I watched her bounce the, uh, up the illuminated steps and vanish into a soaring apartment tower. Half spacecraft, half greenhouse, and covered in glowing triangles. What was this place? Capper cars buzzed around me like I was in some kind of nest. A few of the people inside gave my car a definite look from behind their tinted windows, and they were right. There's that mood matrix. Okay, did I just get mad? I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be with Savvy, and even for her... This is a little much. Okay, so my mood got worse. But it was just a detour, no big deal. I'd do one more ride to earn some coin and be back in sync. Things just had a way of being spontaneous with Savvy. I was never as happy as I'd been when we were together. 
All right, so I don't want to be doing this forever. Field grid. Your new field grid is a biofeedback device that display, displays your emotional state as a color, yellow, green, blue, or red. Your field grid also measures the intensity of your emotions in three levels, low, medium, and high. The more your field grid lights up, the more intense your feelings. This map represents a full spectrum of emotions. Yes, even the icky ones. Each segment is a unique state, so even though you may feel a jumble of emotions, your field grid will let you know which one you're actually experiencing, even if it's a little unpleasant. Notice how you think and react when you're in each color. The idea of the field grid is simply to illuminate the feelings in your body so you can tune into your emotional awareness. So angry, anxious, hyper cheerful, calm, chill, lethargic, and depressed. Nice. By the way, I like putting unusual words on acceptance buttons. Uh, I do that in the tutorial of State of Decay 2, and it's my favorite thing. So. I just like putting words in the player's mouth. It's fun. Anyway, there's no such thing as a bad emotion. Really, just remember that the dark outer edges of the map are more intense feelings, while the lighter shades in the center are more mellow. Groovy. All emotions are valid. The outer limits of the field grid are meant to tell you something, like it's time to take a break, take a nap, or even just take a moment to center. Now, take a deep breath, and good luck out there. Ooh, starting to get tired. I'm in the red. You may be feeling anger, fear, or disgust. In the red, your heart rate is elevated, and you may have symptoms of tension such as headaches, jaw clenching, or stomach pains. You're likely to have difficulty focusing and experience forgetfulness and poor judgment. Try to take deep, slow breaths and avoid spiraling into negative thinking. All right. Cool. All right, so now I've got my field grid. Here's an option. I've got my cache, my journal, my map. All right, let's do, let's do the map. We're in the combine. Um, okay, I'm almost out of juice. Uh, oh yeah, these people, it looks like it's saying I can't get there because I don't have enough juice. So let's get some juice right here. Juice, but well, they actually call it juice. I was just saying that. Okay, well, let's go. So they only accept this special corporate money, not US dollars. Definitely time for a recharge, plus the weird way the hum of the charging stations made my head feel stuffed with cotton. I kind of loved it, even if it was probably killing brain cells. The asking price was 132 a bar. A little steep, but here it was. Uh, yeah, let's get a full charge. I've got enough. I got back on the road. So I should catch up here a little bit. Uh, Wolf of 78 says, and now it feels like a movie Mean Girls met, uh, oh, but like the movie Mean Girls met Cyberpunk, but it was also rated PG-13. Round of the Cord says, I could go for a glass of juice <laughs> right now. Yeah, so, I, you know, try, trying to do the voice of Savvy is kind of hard just because I, I feel like I can't really do justice to the way this character is supposed to sound. Um, but okay, so now I've got, so I've got, okay, this person really far away, or this person here, or what's this anarchist symbol? Um, Gideon DeKalb. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Okay, so, and then it says, will it cost me one bar of battery? What happens if I choose somebody else? Less than a bar of ballot battery. Ooh, founder and chief cat herder at Cure Ate All putting a gentler dent in the universe. Okay, so Anthony's the one that takes the hardest, the most charge to get to, but I'll be much closer to Anthony if I take Allie first. So it seems like I'm, I'm supposed to be planning this way. Like, it's just like with Night Call, it's like I've got a limited amount of time, or in this case, a little limited amount of juice. And so I've got to choose who it is I want to go and tackle. So let's let's go see Allie Bree. It's starting to get late here, and you see I'm starting to yawn, so I'm probably not gonna play too many uh, of these fairs, but uh, sorry I'm running to meet you, but still two blocks away. Can you just stop at the next corner instead of the pickup zone? <sighs> I'm out of breath. Great, not doing what the packs wanted could hurt my star rating. Pulling over in an AV zone could risk a stop from the LOPD. An AV zone? Not to mention a ticket that would set me back some serious coin. I couldn't risk losing the star. Breaking the law. 
I pulled right up to the pin and right inside a clearly marked cap reloading zone. Oh, AV, automated vehicle. My headlights hit one of their cars and it froze in that weird, too fast AI AV way, almost like you scared it. Almost like they weren't the thing to actually be afraid of. Hey, sorry, can we go? She's a robot. <laughs> uh, of course. It's cool. I glanced at her suit for a second. What was she wearing? Half my packs have these hollow space displays, but the full body thing. Barely an hour here and already Savvy was flaking and my packs was covered in weird gadgets. Welcome to Los Ojos. What's good? Any plans tonight? Yeah, kinda. I just moved here. My friend and soon-to-be roommate is be being beyond flaky right now. Crap, that sucks. Eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. So my wrist is still red. I'm curious what's going to change that. Totally, her phone probably just died or something. Why am I always surprised to get a sweet pax? Thanks. Okay, so it is chilling me out. I'm moving towards happy and getting less intense. Mind if I plug in? Suit's running out. My car's battery was terrible at holding a charge, but it looked like I could spare some of the moment. Okay, so I needed a good rating more than the charge. The charge didn't seem that expensive, so maybe maybe the prices go up later. Capra makes you pay extra to use the port in their cars. Hey, we don't nickel and dime people here at Neocab. Never let people say gig worker solidarity isn't a thing. Maybe this good deed will help me when I'm limping along to a charging station later. You don't have to worry about your rating with me. Oh, good. That's moving me a little happier. I used to be a capper mate. Keep it above 4.8 stars or else. Huh. That's pretty strict. Seriously, you get one person having a bad day and there goes your rating. You ever worked for Capra? I did. Never again. A lot of drivers went into Capra mates after the culling. Yeah, we got a pretty raw deal. Capra just patched our cars over the air. I was right at the beginning of a shift. I booted up and the wheel was locked when it drove me home. Oh, that sounds terrible. Seriously? I would have freaked. So wait, sorry, one sec. How long have you been driving for Neocab? It's so funny when Pax tried to pretend they didn't just zone out in their hollow space for a second. Almost two years. But I like it. Moving on, though, what's your opinion of Neocab, the company? Was I missing something about these questions, and how honest did she expect me to be? Uh, it's great. So, that orange tint, is that going to change our mood? Is it unlocked because of my mood? I'm not sure what that's saying. The words went straight to my stomach. I hadn't stopped to eat all night. So she's recommending some kind of a restaurant to me. I, I kind of skipped it a little bit. Do they have... Okay, wait. Neo crab? Yes! Do they have Neo crab? No, but they do this machine-spun soy protein fiber mesh. It's like umami cut candy. So, hey... Do you say your opinions on Sophie's Law are mostly positive or negative? Is she giving me a survey? <laughs> Remind me what that is. <laughs> Sorry, that's a dumb question. Why would a Neocab driver be for something that bans all non-automated cars? Wait, what? So a few weeks ago, this famous ballet dancer died in a car attack. People were just out having a good time, and this guy drove straight into a crowd. Sophie and like 15 other people were killed. Oh, that's awful. Who was the driver? Nobody knows. They never released his name, or else... I don't know, some people think it was all planned to get this law to happen. Anyway, the vote's in a few days, so it'll all blow over soon blow over. The law passed. Looks like I'd be out of a job. Oh, a Capra buzzed by me. 
Of course, but human driver's illegal, and how else would people get around the city? So I know it's dumb, but I just need a clear answer. Here, I'll repeat the question. Would you say your opinions on Sophie's Law are mostly positive or negative? Wait a sec, was she reading these off some kind of script? What's up with all the questions? Oh, right, you're new in town. I do surveillance for Capra. Surveillance? Yeah, it's like surveillance is from above, surveillance is from below. So usually the the, the the place I've heard the term surveillance was actually from David Brin. He's got a great blog, by the way, if you want to look it up. But uh, he's a big believer in the idea that, you know, that... Um, that the way to sort of counter, you know, people are, get, get very worried about governments and corporations being able to sort of spy on you and collect all your data and stuff like that, um, and, which they mostly do in aggregate. You know, they're not really spying on individual people so much as spying on trends. Um, but uh, but he said that the, the, the effective counter to that is surveillance. That basically, you know, that yeah, you know, the the, the great you know, overlords of our society can look at us, but we can also look at them, and we can use it for you know for whatever you know activism, getting you know holding people to uh, to the laws, that sort of thing. That you know that these you know advanced this advanced technology that lets you know um, you know companies guess at, uh, at what people want, guess their trends, watch their telemetry, stuff like that also allows you to, for instance, um, film, I mean, it's film, <laughs> record and immediately post um, a video of, say, police brutality or something like that. Um, and so, you know, you can hold the people in charge accountable using the same technology that they could also use to oppress you. Uh, and I really like that idea. And so it's interesting they're bringing it up here. Except here, they've got surveillance going on from the overlords, which is not usually the context in which I've heard that word used. So... Uh, that's interesting. I don't think Capra is below anybody. Well, it's like surveillance is what the cops in the NSA do. What Capra does is data collection, business intelligence. You know, help the community, improve service. They got cameras and sensors all over this suit. I'm like a big sponge sucking in data from everything and sending it to Capra. So you've been recording our conversation all along? Yeah, sorry, I forget I'm even doing it. <laughs> it's just always tracking. <laughs> wow. Ambient radiation, my own vitals. If there's an off-the-shelf sensor for it, I'm probably wearing it. So those questions are what Capra wants to know about us, huh? They let us chat a little bit, but yeah, it's their questionnaire. Like opposition research stuff. Gotta fill my quota. I'm really sorry. I just assume everyone I talk to knows. So I've been talking to Capra this whole time. About me. About the job I scraped together when they fired me. I felt my shoulders tighten and dug my nails into the wheel. All the Capras snaking through the lane suddenly came into focus like a swarm. Like I was surrounded. Let's try to breathe. Hmm. Gotta say, I wish I'd gotten some warning. Oh no, that does not look good. She was staring right at my wrist. My feel grid was blazing red. Let me switch this friggin' thing off. Can you do that? I just did. I should have realized when you said it was your first night in LO. All this stuff is normal to me so focused on our metrics. It was a terrible introduction, but welcome to Los Ojos. <laughs> we got great food and never mind the Panopticon. Don't you get in trouble for shutting it off? I might. But it's not worth making you feel miserable. You feel? She was quiet for the first time. I could feel her relaxing now that the suit had gone dark. Allie flashed a smile at me, and I could finally see her face. Anyways, I love your hair. I cut mine short like that. I miss it. In this heat, I just want to shave it all off, but that's a whole look, you know. Well, I'm really getting happier with her. 
<laughs> Am I babbling? It's been too long since I've... Well, ah, ever since I took this job, it's like I'm just a passenger in this suit, you know what I mean? Man, you gotta be on your toes with this reading. Capra does all the talking, and I'm along for the ride. I mean, I've got a pause button here, I guess. But, like, you know, when we were working on the subtitles for State of Decay 2, um, there were different standards that you could follow. Like, there's, like, publicly, there are, like... Like, like TV stations, you know, they'll use certain standards for deciding how long a subtitle has to stay up on the screen in order to have effectively, you know, captured the line and, and let people who were not, you know, who, who are not listening to the audio uh, absorb uh, the text. And there's certain, like, rules that they use, and they say, well, if you're showing this much text and you got to wait this much time to let, uh, to let the viewer, you know, read it. And so I think we, I don't remember what standard we used, we chose some specific standard that was established somewhere else and decided to use that for our subtitles on Standard Decay 2. And so I don't, it seems like they're using a more aggressive standard here, where they're, they're, they're shutting them off. Either they're not using a standard at all and they're just using sort of an arbitrary time scheme, uh, or they're using one that's more aggressive where it cuts the line off quicker and I can't always keep track of it. Hmm. Oh, I paused right when I was going to make a choice anyway. Great. Um... Oh, by the way, Randolph Cord says, I wonder if you can match the turn she does with the roadmap and actual and the actual way to wherever you end up. So I suspect not, um, because right now I can just sit here as long as I need to. Um, and she keeps turning, she keeps doing stuff. So I think she's just screwing around. I think that that actually I would be really fascinated to learn how they did this. Because I mean, you can imagine a version of this where she literally does just drive to the destination and arrive you know and, and they've got a literal map of the city they actually built the city physically and she's actually following the, the map you could totally imagine that version of it but that version would really struggle with right now when i'm just letting her drive and i'm not progressing the story at all um because i'm assuming that this ride has got a certain set of things that are said that it won't just get cut off if i go faster or slower um and you know my passenger isn't noticing that I'm just delaying for a long time. So it feels like they have to be very flexible with how they do the background going by. So I'm imagining the easiest solution would probably be to just sort of have an arbitrary map and have just an arbitrary series of behaviors that will basically loop, will just play on a loop until it's time to do something like pull over. Um, that's, that's my guess. That's probably what I would do. Or it looks like she keeps turning right. So maybe she's actually driving around in circles in a certain part of town. And that's what she, oh wait, never mind. No, huh. Yeah, I really don't know how it works. I, this is fast, this is a fascinating problem though. There's a lot of different ways you could solve it if you were assigned to basically make an infinite cab ride in a game that looks like she's making a bunch of intentional turns. There's lots of ways you could do it and I'm not sure which ones they're using here, but it is a fascinating problem to solve because, and it looks like I mean they put a lot of effort into you know she moves the wheel, uh, you know in time with uh, with the car moving something. Like there's a lot of detail to it. You see how like as she's going by, like there's lights that shine into the car, and there's just a lot going on that they had to sort of plan as they're sort of setting up this environment and its impact on on you know the character and everything and you know the route through the city. They're doing a lot. And this is like it's. It's just simple background movement as far you know as far as our perspective goes, but a lot of painstaking work went into all the details of making this thing that you ignore happen. And and, and there's there's so much of video games that it, that's like that. Um, you know, thinking of like there's a sequence in The Last of Us 2 where you're riding in the back of a vehicle and you travel a pretty decent ways and through a lot of it all you're doing is talking but somebody made this beautiful environment around you <laughs> that's mostly for talking and a little bit of combat and that's it and you're just like wow the work that goes into doing something that whizzes by in the background is just insane um, and so this is a, a really good example of that because I mean Neocab is clearly made by a very small team so somebody kind of made a labor of love out of building this this environment and making it all work the way it should work it kind of reminds me a little bit, actually, of um, uh, there's a video I just released today uh, on Townscaper, which you know it was um, I believe the artist or artist or tech artist who who sort of made uh, the environments of Bad North work these procedurally generated islands uh, full of little towns and things like that where you'd get into these uh, tactical battles. Um, 
whoever built these procedurally generated landscapes moved on to saying like hey can i make it just a procedurally generated town builder and basically just like not procedurally generated but like a tool that lets you sort of you know either randomly generate a town or let a player uh just poke around and just click things and make stuff grow and shrink and just make a town appear townscaper is just this fascinating thing and uh but it's the same basically it's somebody who put that kind of painstaking work into making a map generator which you know you don't pay much attention to the work that went into that you just you just say oh here's this map and you just play on it and you're not thinking about the work that went into making the map cohesive and and you know the art all fit together and look good no matter how many random ways it got scrambled somebody put a ton of work into that and then in townscaper they actually really got to show off the effort that they put into that because that because that game is just all about the thing they built um and so yeah so for neocamp like it's nice to sort of set back sometimes in a game and appreciate all the work that went into some detail that most of the time you just breeze right by anyway what am i talking about uh I got that when I was driving for Capra too. <laughs> Ranith Court says, typical cabbie, driving in circles to drive the fare up. <laughs> I forgot what she's talking about, but uh, I'll mount them like antlers. Whatever it is, we should always mount it like antlers. Definitely. I pulled up to a shopping center, skyscrapers on one side and skeletons of their future neighbors on the other. The city's growing. Hey, Allie. Don't give up. You'll find something better. Again, I'm not sure if that was available because of my mood. Thanks for not kicking me out of your car. Never let them say gig worker solidarity isn't a thing, right? That's friggin' right. I'll hit you up if I need a real human again. Good luck in Los Ojos. I watched a suit blink back to life as she vanished to a crowd of shoppers. Looks like Capra could find their way into my car, no matter what. Even through a sweetheart like Allie. So I'm getting a little madder. Alright, let's see what this gig worker, worker did to my yes, five stars. Gig folk got to stick together. Your rating stayed perfect. Got some cash. Now I'm in Liberty Heights. There's my battery. And it's still night one. As I turned the corner, I slowed the car. A throng of people had gathered in the street. They surrounded an empty Capra car in a messy circle. What's happening here? They were yelling, barking things at each other and at the car. A few were taking swings at it with chains. The auto car made dozens of tiny rapid fire turns, trying to free itself from the circle. I thought of a moth trapped between window panes. Then another sound. Was that my back door? Who's this? What the? I need to get out of here. I need you to go. I'll pay. What the? Listen, I can explain, but I need you to go. You're a neocab, right? I'm... Um, you drive people. We need to go. I can't be here. Uh, okay, so... Hmm... So your figure state colors your choices, sometimes adding new options and sometimes disabling them. Okay, so this, okay, so now it's explaining what these tinged uh, things are. So I'm betting that what are you doing in my car is unlocked because I'm already a little bit over on the mad side. Um, works for me if you're paying. I gritted my teeth. I was way too angry. Oh, okay. So it killed that one. I tried to do it. So it's interesting that it doesn't tell me in advance what I can't do. It lets me choose it and then shows me that I can't. All right. So it looks like I've got to do this because I was mad in the wake of the previous conversation. You want a ride? You go through a neocab. You don't just open my door without asking. Look, I'm sorry, seriously, but my total bike under the wheels of that Capra, okay? I nearly died. If we don't get out of here now, the cops will be here, and my life will actually be over. I can explain everything, but first you need to put some distance in between us and that mob. Okay, we're getting out of here, and then you're explaining everything. I clenched my hands on the wheel. No way was I letting anything slide right now. 
Oh, really? I can't say that. I have to say the mad thing? Let's try the top one. Heat flared in my face. I was sick and tired of being pushed around. You know what? No. Wow, interesting. If the cops are coming, that's your issue. Stop telling me what to do from the back seat of my own car. I let the silence and the tension fill the space. The packs looked so scared. The battle outside was getting worse. And did I really want to deal with LOPD right now? Hey, hey, you got panic eyes. I see you. Do you see me? I can usually get a read on a person the first time I see their face. Savvy called it my truth download. Not like she ever listened to it when, I was, when it was about someone who I wanted to date. But I needed to be calm to hear that little voice inside my head, and this pax had me all riled up. Hmm. I met their eyes in the rearview mirror. By the way, I keep getting these messages from um, my computer warning me it wants to restart for an update. I assume it's not going to do that while I'm actively using it, but if I disappear, that's why. Anyway, you're the sort of person who feels things really intensely, right? This is an intense situation. Please, take one second to see me asking you for help and drive. I held their gaze. I felt the fear evaporate. My pulse slowed. There we go. They trailed off as they watched my field grid uh, crash from angry red into a chill green. It seemed to calm them down, too. You're wearing one of those field things, and it looks like we're cool? Uh, we're cool. That's good, because me and the LOPD are not. Floor it! They got us out of there in the nick of time, just as the squad cars rolled up and the bike punks scrambled into the night. What's your name? I'm Azul. Ow, why does that adrenaline ever have to wear off? This really hurts, dude. I'm Lena. Where are we going? Take me... Ah, man, I need to get to work. I work at this club in Luz Rouge. It's not too far. I... Ow. Are you okay? I, I'm bleeding. Oh, no! Can I help? Can you give me stitches and antibiotics? No, is it that bad? No, forget it. I'm just rattled. Thanks for asking. And don't worry, I won't mess up your car. That was thoughtful. Neocab is supposed to cover cleaning costs for things like that. But once they do, there's always a mysterious Operation Surcharge that'll pop up in your paycheck a few days later. I got hit by a Capra. I was on my bike. Came out of nowhere, sideswiped me, and then just kept driving. Right over my bike, like it was some twigs in the road. Ugh. Did you get the plate number? Ah, yeah, no I didn't. Don't bother going back, though. Forget it. And all those people just showed up? No, no, I called a radix swarm. What's a radix swarm? You know who radix is, right? Uh, no clue? We're activists. We stand up against corporate entities like, like Capra. Radix is all about direct action to change the city for the people. Getting rid of cars, that's just a seed. What grows from that are safer streets, public transit that works, a big chunk bitten out of the luxury market. Most people see us as punks on bikes, but most people are blind. So then what's a swarm? If you're a member of Radix and you're in trouble, like you're the latest hit and run by a Capra, you set up a flare on the app to call a Radix Swarm. It alerts the other members, shows them where you are, tells them you need help. So, that was help? It doesn't seem like it did much for you. You're here with me. It just, it got crazy, I don't know. I didn't expect that. Is it your first time calling a Swarm? 
Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. It's not supposed to be like that. What's it supposed to be like? I don't know. I thought they'd save me. But it's like they just showed up to trash a Capra car. Nobody tried to get my bike or whatever. One dude helped me up, but like, the second I said I was okay? It didn't matter anymore. Neocab to the rescue. Ugh. That makes it even worse. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because it's still a car, aka a shiny death machine. You're still putting people at risk every day, plus... I shouldn't be riding around in a death machine in front of a bunch of Radix folks. Getting out of there was the right idea. Do you think they saw me get in? Nah. He seemed pretty focused on the car. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can feel them relaxed, just a little. What a rat-infested dumpster of a night. My leg's killing me, my bike's gone. They're probably gonna ask me to leave Radix. Without that, they need people like you. People who cruise around in shiny death machines? People who call cars shiny death machines. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Look, where I'm going, I don't want them to see me get out of the car. So can you drop me, like, on the corner of Guadalupe and Sanders? I'll walk the rest of the way. Sanders. On that leg? That's just a scrape. I'm fine. Your call. Well, yeah, so I've got this habit of whenever there's a... Uh... Oh, see here. Here's good. Maybe just pull into the alley? The whole block looked pretty deserted, but I slipped into the shadows. Whatever will put their mind at ease. You don't, like, record this, right? That's the Neocab deal? Right, no camera, nothing on the app. You were never here as old. Okay. Well, how much do I owe you? Hmm. No charge. For real? You were in a tough situation. I would have wanted to get out of there, too. And also, I think they're not on the app, so don't worry about the money. Just be safe. Wow, thank you. Listen, you didn't have to help me out like that. I really appreciate it. But, like, what you saw... No worries, I'll keep it quiet. Thanks. Oh wait, I didn't get your name. Lena. Cool, thanks Lena. I'm Azul, I said that, right? You did, and you're welcome. Have a good night. Azul stepped out of the car, stumbling a bit, like they couldn't put too much weight on their knee. Without so much as a look back, though, they shook it off and limped into the alley. It was well after midnight. I met my ride quota. I checked my field grid. Yellow green. Most nights I call it quits about now. Maybe pushed on for one last ride if I had it in me. But until I heard from Savvy, I'd know where to go. When was she going to text me back? So it's interesting, they've got a lot of drama going on here, and it seems like, you know, I could have picked... I, I, I picked Ali and then stumbled into Azul. I could have picked somebody else, but I still would have probably had this same situation with Savvy. It's like, they've got this story that they're telling, but they're telling it in these chunks that can be scrambled up in different orders. Like, like saying, fulfilling my ride quota, but I didn't actually log this as a proper ride, and so I think you can sort of see, like... Uh, the, you can kind of see the cracks in, in the storytelling, the way that, you know, the, the system makes it hard for them to do weird things, like weird things like uh, picking up Azul. Unless I would have actually, if Azul hadn't shown up, maybe I would have still hit my ride quota after Ali? Or maybe Azul shows up no matter whether I chose Ali or anyone else, and 
the ride quota is just about the previous ride, and Azul just always happens to tell me about Radix. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways that this story could work, and I can't tell just from one playthrough. Uh, you'll notice I, I met, started mentioning earlier that I've got this habit of whenever there's a special dialogue option unlocked by a stat, like I got used to this in Mass Effect, like you always want to choose that option. It's always superior to the others. And so in this case, I was still doing that. I don't know if that's actually true in Neocab, if, like, if I really want to hit the colorful option every single time. I know that at least in one case, I had to choose the red option because the other ones were locked. And I wonder, I don't know if that was true of the green option, or if I could have chosen whatever I wanted and ignored the green if I wanted to. Hard to say. But, so, this game is fascinating. Uh, I mean, they're doing a lot of really interesting things under the surface where, you know, it feels like a very straightforward, point A to point B, series of little vignettes telling this larger story about this character's life, and particularly about this world. Like, you notice how, how well the writers have sort of, you know, they've brought in all of these details about the world. They feel like the story is more about the world than it is about the people. It's about the people, too. But uh, this feels almost like a, it's, a, it's a milieu story. It's a, you know, it's a story about a place that you get to know by you know, seeing all these little vignettes inside it. Um, so, yeah, and it starts, you know, the beginning of the story is entering the strange place. And I imagine the end of the story should probably end up being me leaving it. Um, and so that's how you can kind of recognize a story that's, that's about the place where you are. Um, but anyway, so uh, I'm not going to go any further tonight because, oh my gosh, it's getting late. Uh, but that is Neocab. And, and so it's interesting, you know, Nightcall and Neocab both have very different vibes to them. Uh, like, Neocab has got this sort of, like, very modern, cyberpunky, synthwavy sort of vibe to it. Um, whereas uh, Nightcall is much more of, like, the... Uh, the, the, the the classic noir, black and white, you know. You expect to hear, like, saxophones on the street corners and stuff like that. Um, Night Call, you know, feels like it needs to have this, like, or, or is just, it's interested in this overarching story uh, that it's telling, and it's sort of like, you're consciously playing through these vignettes, but you're, you're, you're aware of the fact that there's a larger structure at play, and you're doing these, these activities between sessions. It could be that Neocab has got something like that going on too. I don't know if you're gonna like end your night at some point and have some sort of some sort of like meta structure the way that Nightcall does, because I haven't gotten far enough in it yet. But if this feels a lot more like it's it's meaning to tell the story more organically, you know, the way that it has. Uh, but both it, interesting, both of them have these occasions where people get in your car who are not normal fares, and they're part of the larger overarching story. People like Savvy, people like um, like what, what was the name of I keep wanting to call her Buffet. Her name is not Buffet. Whatever the name of the cop is in Night Call. Anyway, so it's interesting how, you know, I don't think these teams collaborated. I don't think they really looked at each other's work because, you know, they both were being developed around the same time. Um, I think Neocab is a little earlier than Night Call, but I, I think Night Call had to be well into production before Neocab came out. Um, and so, uh, but it's interesting how they kind of settle on some of the same mechanics, you know, still needing to pay for gas out of your, uh, you know, out of your uh, income, worrying about, you know, travel times between uh, different, uh, different riders, or, you know, worrying about, keep, you know, keeping them happy. Um, just the way that they're sort of these little independent vignettes, but then they sort of still add up to a milieu story that tells you something about the world that you're in. In Night Call, it felt like the vignettes were a lot more off the wall and weird and random. There were a lot of them. Uh, Neocab seems like there are probably fewer on the table, and each one of them serves a purpose in telling you the story of the setting. Um, and so there, there are some flavor differences to them. And, and, and But it's just interesting how when you have the same basic idea, you know, game design... It's really interesting because, you know, a lot of it is, some of it is just, just wild-eyed creativity, but some of it is discoverable. Some of it is like you, you know, you test out ideas until you find the ones that, that resonate with people. And when you find them, you lean into them. And so when, when games choose really similar topics, it's really easy to sort of settle down into the same grooves um, because you discover the same the same possibilities, you know, and people will sometimes, you know, criticize games for being too similar to other games or for, I think I saw somebody on Twitter, for instance, going after people for having, um, hiding in tall grass as part of a stealth mechanic. Like, oh, it's so derivative when somebody does hiding in tall grass, uh, cause, cause The Last of Us 2 is the most recent one, but there are several other games that have done it recently. And I'm like, no, no, no. When you're discovering what is intuitive and fun to people, 
you are going to settle into the same answers. You're going to find the same things, the same, you know, uh, uh, you know, things are going to pop up as being really compelling and familiar and understandable to players. And so, of course, people are going to do this, find the same solutions. That's not copying. That's not derivative. That's discovering who your audience is and what they want. So anyway, so that's what we can learn from Nightcall and Neocab. So I'm glad we got to do this evening uh, because like I said, uh, when I was uh, playing Nightcall, usually I'm too tired to play text heavy games. I skip through all the text. I try to get to the adrenaline as fast as I can um, because uh, it's the only thing that's gonna keep me awake. Uh, and so I'm glad that we started uh, this stream a little bit early today so that I could actually play both of these games and learn something about them because it was really interesting, at least to me. So uh, let's wrap up this video, hit a subscribe button, and maybe move on to something else. I don't know, I might be kind of tired. Maybe this is enough for tonight. Got a lot of videos queued up, so.